and welcome. In this video, we're going to go through an introduction to linear functions. So I'll try to give you basically everything you need to know about linear functions in this video, and then I have separate videos going into more detail about all of the different aspects of a linear function and how we use them. So we say that a linear function is a function that has a constant rate of change, which we usually call the slope. So the defining feature of a linear function is this constant rate of change. So just to make sure we understand what that means, let me show you two graphs here that have different rates of change and we'll talk about what is different between them. So the graph on the left is what we are going to have as our linear function. So this is a function with a constant rate of change. What this means is that if we look from left to right, as we take one step up on the graph, we go one step to the right. Then we go one step up, one step to the right, one step up, one step to the right, and this repeats itself. So this little step that we're taking each time, or this rate of change as we move from left to right, is constant, it's never changing. However, if we look at the graph on the right, we could see that the first step is maybe down four to the right one, and then we have down three to the right one, down one to the right one, and then we start going to be increasing. So that first part was decreasing and now we're increasing. So we'd have right one up one, right one up three, right one up four, etc. So here this graph has a changing rate of change. So at every point the rate of change is different and so it's constantly changing. Another way to say this is that it has a changing slope, whereas the linear function has a constant slope. So we'll see this type of function again. This is a quadratic function or a parabola, but for now we're focusing on linear functions or lines. So linear functions can be written a specific way, and that is in the form f of x equals mx plus b. So linear functions can always be rewritten in this form. So here these letters are used to represent different components. So m represents the slope. This is just the letter we choose to represent that constant rate of change. And since it's constant, that m just represents some value, that rate of change of the line. Then x is our variable or whatever is the input to the function. So we have the function f of x, it takes x as the input, and this is what happens to the input. It gets multiplied by x and then it gets b added to it. So that plus b is then the vertical intercept. So that represents the vertical intercept of the line, and we'll talk a little bit more about what that means going forward. Just know that b is the vertical intercept. So if you've learned lines before, you might be used to seeing this as y equals mx plus b. So this is the case if we let y equal f of x, so if we consider y as the output, then we would rewrite this as y equals mx plus b. So if you've seen it that way, this is the same thing. We just are occasionally using f of x to reinforce our function notation. This specific way to write a linear function is called slope-intercept form. We also have another way to write lines called point-slope form. We'll talk about that in a future video, but just know there are two ways we typically write equations of lines, but they can always come back to this slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, or f of x equals mx plus b. Okay, so let's look at a graph of a line on Desmos. I have it set up here so that we can change m and b and see how the graph behaves differently. So let's try first to look at different m values. And remember, m is our rate of change here. So when we start at m equals one, we have that up one over one, up one over one, up one over one slope. But when we make m larger, so we let m become a larger value, this line is getting steeper. So the slope is getting steeper, the rate of change is increasing, so we just have a larger slope. Then as we get a negative slope, you'll see that the line changes to be decreasing. So now our orientation has changed so that the function is going downhill, we have a negative slope, so we're going down. Then just to mention, if we have m equals zero, you can see we're here in this horizontal line. So this line has no slope, and so we just have that b value left when m is zero. So it gets rid of the x, and now we just have the b, and so this is our horizontal line. It's still a linear function, it just has a slope of zero. 
So while we still have this graph up, I just want to comment that we can notice the domain and the range here. So the domain is going to be all real numbers, and the range is also going to be all real numbers. So everything is a possible input and everything is a possible output. This line is going to cover all of the possible inputs and outputs, and so the domain is all real numbers and the range is all real numbers, which we would write as negative infinity to positive infinity as an interval. Okay, so let's summarize what we just talked about by stating some properties of linear functions. So we say that if the slope is positive, meaning the m value is greater than zero, which is equivalent to our function being increasing. So linear functions are always increasing if the slope is positive. So in contrast, if the slope is negative, where m would be less than zero, then the function is always decreasing. So just notice it can't be increasing and decreasing. It doesn't do both. It doesn't change. A linear function is always increasing or always decreasing. Or it could be in this third case where the slope is zero. That means m is equal to zero. And then we'd say the function is neither increasing or decreasing. This would be our horizontal line. So from this, we can conclude that linear functions don't have any local maximums or local minimums because we would have to change from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing in order for this to happen. Then, as we mentioned, for linear functions, the domain is all real numbers, which is the interval negative infinity to positive infinity, and the range is the same. So the range is also all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, so we looked at the m value and tried different slopes. Let's go back to our graph and try some different b values. So for our b values, this is our vertical intercept, which is where the line crosses the vertical axis. So intercept basically means intersect. And so we're looking at where the line intersects that y or vertical axis. So when b is zero, we are intersecting zero on the y. Then we see as b becomes more positive, our graph is shifting up. So it's like a shift up by whatever that b value is. And so it's moving our vertical intercept up to that new b value. Then similarly, if b is a negative value, we're just shifting the graph down, and so we're intersecting that vertical axis at whatever that b value is. It might just be negative or positive. And of course, we can change m and b at the same time, so we can move the graph up and down, and we can change the slope with m. All right, so let's summarize this really quick. We talked about what the vertical intercept is, but let me write a little bit about it. And we also have a separate video where we go into more detail. So a linear function will have a vertical intercept at the point zero B. So zero is the X value, meaning we're not moving at all. And we're just going to wherever that B value is on the Y. So on that vertical axis. So if B is positive, we'd go up to that B value. If B is negative, we're just going down to that B value. And as I've been saying, we would summarize this as wherever the function is intersecting the vertical axis. Then linear functions can also have a horizontal intercept. So similarly, this is where the function intersects the horizontal axis. Okay, and that is it for our intercepts and everything we need to know about linear functions. So that's just a little introduction into lines and what is unique about them. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.